So let's get to our essential question of today, which is how can a chemical that's at room temperature release heat when it's not hot itself? That's an amazing thing that is occurring there. And the answer has to do with potential energy. And we're going to draw in some other probably life experiences that you had to try to explain this, but there must be some potential energy stored in those chemicals. Now think about this. If I said to you, you know what, let's go grab a, a can of gasoline and hug it real close to us, you know, um, that's an awful, a lot of people would not, she looks unbelievably relaxed to me, that's all I'm saying. A lot of people would not feel relaxed. I mean, sure, if you wanted me to carry over, you know, one of those big uh, five-gallon jugs of water, no problem, you'd see a smile on my face. I feel like there's more danger over here. In the same way that if you held a bowling ball above your head, you'd feel, you'd feel a lot of danger there because that bowling ball above your head has a lot of potential energy. In the same way the gas can has more potential energy than the water. It's the same idea. There seems to be energy stored uh, at a higher level in gasoline than there is in water. That's why people tend to treat it more carefully than they do water. By the way, I'm not advocating hugging your gasoline can. Very dangerous, right? Because those, those chemicals have high potential energy. So it's the same as some other things that we see in life. Like say, for instance, if you were in one of these two cars and your brakes were not working, I bet you would feel a lot more comfortable down here because this car has low potential energy. If you're at the bottom of the hill and your brakes go out, it's no big deal. But if you're at the top of the hill and you have high potential energy, there's a big risk that you'd go down the hill really fast. All of that potential energy has potential to turn into another kind of energy, which is the energy of movement. And if you remember maybe from middle school, that's kinetic energy. So potential energy can get turned into other forms of energy. It's like the gas can is like the car at the top of the hill. It has a lot of potential energy in it. Now, as long as the car is just sitting there, you don't have to worry about anything. But it does have the potential to turn into speed. Whereas the gasoline can has the potential to release a lot of heat. You know, the car at the bottom of the hill is an awful lot like the water, right? Water does not have a lot of potential energy in it. In it. And so it's like the car at the bottom of the hill. You don't have to worry too much about it doing anything. It's a very similar, similar thing. So what we're talking about is changing potential energy into other forms of energy. Now, if you imagine that, uh, that you uh, have a roller coaster at the top of a hill, it has high potential energy. By the time it gets down here, it'll have low potential energy. Well, that potential energy will get transferred as it gets released, it will be released from its form of potential energy and it changes that form and turns into kinetic energy. But it could also turn into heat energy. Like think about this, you might think they get going fast, it all gets turned into speed, right? Which is what kinetic energy is. But it's not just speed. It turns out the track will get a little hot because there's like friction and things like that. Very often potential energy gets turned into more than one other form of energy. Now we're gonna focus mostly on when it gets turned into heat energy. And obviously we're not gonna talk about roller coasters, that's physics, but it's just a really good analogy to help you figure this out. One other thing that's a, it's a minor point is if you put the roller coaster on top of Mount Everest, now you could imagine there's a lot of potential energy, but there's potential energy, high potential energy here, and there's now high potential energy there because you're so far above the ground. But it's actually the difference in potential energy that will determine how fast that roller coaster gets going. It's the change in potential energy that really matters. If the roller coaster was sitting on the top of Mount Everest and the track was flat and you had the car on it, there would be no risk of going faster. It's the change in potential energy that really matters. And you can see why we're about to talk about delta H. All right, let's go back to the gasoline can. 
So the gasoline can, its potential energy could get turned into heat energy if the reaction starts. Like you can see this gasoline uh, carrying truck has started doing the reaction. It is releasing copious amounts of heat. If you were standing right here, if you were the firefighter, you'd feel so much heat being released from the reaction. It's a very, very, very exothermic reaction. Oop, exothermic. Because heat is being released. If this was you standing here, you would be feeling this heat coming towards you. And while you would be feeling warm, heat would be going away from the container and towards you. So from the reactions perspective, its delta H is negative. Whereas from you, your Q, remember delta H and Q, kind of the same thing, right? But delta H is for the chemical reaction. But for, Q, for you, since the heat's coming towards you, your Q is positive. But as I said with the roller coaster, it's not that it just gets turned into heat energy. It can also be changed into kinetic energy. Because when this thing explodes, have you ever seen like tires go flying? Well, that's kinetic energy. That's movement of objects. Maybe it explodes and blows away the gas station pumps and they fall over. Well, if you push things, that's kinetic energy. Now, like I said, we're going to be focused mostly on heat energy. But here, too, in chemical reactions, the potential energy in the can can get turned into heat energy and kinetic energy. It's a change of energy.